royal wave here so we can start welcome to the discussion session of tuesday february 28th 2023 and we'll start with a review of the regular meeting this evening and mr McNeese, please thank you on tonight's agenda we have an introduction of an ordinance authorizing a cable franchise agreement with verizon consideration of the boards and authorities ordinance with the, which the commission has discussed multiple times in the discussion session uh, consideration of the release of financial securities for the home at Two Woodland Drive, consideration of pension benefit commencement, uh, fall surface replacement at Main Park, and awards of the following contracts, Brick Street Restoration, Curb Maintenance, Sewer Lining, Chemical Root Treatment, as well as the purchase of two police vehicles. Great, thank you very much. Next on the agenda, Platform Tennis Court Resurfacing Developed. Well, Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm joined by Don Gavitt, who's the president of Mount Lebanon uh, Platform Tennis Association this evening. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the platform hut project and then some necessary maintenance that is uh, coming due on the platform tennis court. So I'd like to have Don just start with describing the project a little bit for, uh, for you. And then I'll jump in with some of the maintenance and we can answer any questions that you have. Good, after, good evening, everybody. Um, so the uh, the platform tennis hut um, is was constructed. We broke ground uh, starting in April of this of 2022. Uh, we completed it uh, and got temporary occupancy permit uh, just before Thanksgiving, uh, November of 2022. Um, the total project uh, over three years started uh, in 2021. Through last year and part of this year, we expanded through the MLPTA's fundraising $391,000 uh, of everything that we've uh, done for our fundraising efforts through our members. Um, in addition, we had some private loans from some of our members that they made to our, to our association. So uh, almost $90,000 in private loans. So that took us to where we needed to get the, the project done. Uh, the only two items that I'm aware of that need to be done, the only one I believe for the permanent occupancy permit is the sidewalks, which is my understanding uh, Mount Lebanon was going to take care of that using their contractor. Uh, and the other thing is uh, landscaping. There's just the land, the, it was just late in the year. We couldn't get any landscaping done, but it's my understanding uh, Mount Lebanon is going to throw some topsoil and seed down when the weather warms up. Um, so can I just ask a question? What sure. was the total cost then of the warm hut? A uh, little over $391,000. Okay, cool. I got that one right. And then yeah. you you don't have the occupancy permit yet because you temporary. need... We have temporary. You have temporary, but you don't have permanent because you need ex only external things, the landscaping correct. and the sidewalk. That's correct. Okay. And is it true that that's on us now at this point, Ian, or do we not know? Um, I think the... We talked about the sidewalks and the landscaping, but you know, I think just finalizing all that once it gets done, obviously we'll have to you know inspect it to make sure it's done up to yeah. municipal standard and all that. Okay. And then of that three ninety one, what? How much money did the platform tennis put into the project? Three hundred ninety one thousand. Okay, you asked about total costs. So was that, that that's what that was our contribution to the project. The total yeah. cost of the project was to report. Um. I believe it, the other thing outstanding would have been whatever Mount Lebanon spent on bringing sewer and water into the into the facility, which I'm not sure what that number was. Yeah, I don't know what it is either, but that is the other side of the project. Previous year to the hut being built, the municipality brought in uh, sewer right. and water. Um, that was sort of the utility side of things. We already had electricity there. Um, I don't remember offhand what the cost of that was. We budgeted 30K for that that year. I don't remember what the actual expenditure was, but the budget number was 30K. Yeah, well, I remember talking to their lawyer about this whole project and some illegal aspects of it. And, and that's that's what I recall. We put the sewer in, but they did everything else for that time. Mm -hmm. Much nicer than a hut, too. That's kind of a miss now. Yeah, I'd say that too. With the old building was a hut. This is a very nice building. Brave, brave reviews from everybody from our membership and everybody who has come in from other uh, clubs to play in there. It's very nice. Brave reviews. Thank you. Uh, so that's it, that's as far as the only outstanding items to get permanent occupancy permit. Um, I did talk to David about 
some maintenance items that has popped up uh, on the courts themselves, having to do with the gritty surface. Yeah. We have a, a couple of corner screens that have split that need to be replaced and general tightening. But uh, David, I don't know if you want to take it from there, but I'm happy to answer any other questions anybody the commissioners have. Yeah, I mean, I think you all received my memo in your packet, so I don't need to belabor that too much. Um, you know, we're recommending four courts be resurfaced um, we think we could get another year potentially out of one and two, but there's a $1,200 savings by doing all four. Um, and, you know, that's not taking into account any potential price increases next year. Um, so I think it makes sense to, to knock it out. Um, you know, total cost of the projects, $22,050. Uh, MLPTA has offered to contribute 25%, which is $5,000. $512.50, leaving the cost of the municipality at $16,537.50. Um, I think, and as the memo says, you know, it's approximately every five years. There's no exact science. It depends on a lot of things. How well was the paint applied the last time, the cure time, the usage? Um, there's a million uh, variables um, when it comes to paint. So, but I think just moving forward, what I am going to do is just budget for courts resurfacing every fifth year. Um, you don't have to do it if you right. don't need it, sure. but it's there yeah, but and it's it there. would save us to going through these extra steps <laughs> right. um, because I, I think it's just something we really want to kind of stay on top of. And, and you know, it's yeah. varied from year to year. We've gone as long as seven. Um, we resurfaced when we rebuilt one and two because we did three and four also because it was more efficient. We had contractors on site. Um, so we had a little shorter resurfacing window for three and four that year. Um, but, you know, there's no predicting it, but it's approximately every five years. So, three, sorry. Um, Mindy and I went down and got the opportunity to go through the platform tennis. The tour. Facility. <laughs> yes. And at the time we talked about um, perhaps thinking about whether one of the tennis courts could be converted into your new 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 courts for you for platform tennis and then put some um, pickleball in some of your other courts. It was all, you know, nobody- it's Very theoretical, yeah. Very theoretical. Level, like nobody maybe needs to write it down and say they did what? <laughs> we didn't do anything but talk about it. But we did get in this year, um, for this year, the study of the main part, including all of those racquetball and all that kind of stuff to try to start talking about what makes the best sense in the future. So does that make any difference in wanting to resurface these now? I don't think so. Okay. Um, you know, they have a, a, the courts themselves, the structure, the yeah. screens, the lights, all that has a, a life expectancy too. Um, when we rebuilt courts one and two, we were able to reuse some of the decking. So that's an option. You can take that decking and, you know, put it in a, in a new court as well, okay. um, provided it's in good condition. So I, I don't think that really factors in. Um, if we're talking about a five-year span, I don't know that we'd be ready to build new courts in five years, maybe. Um, okay. But even if we were, I think you could repurpose, um, reuse some of that. Um, I, I had asked uh, Mr. Gavitt about some of their, you know, visioning their, their long-term right, plans right, for yeah. platform and That's how good. that relates yeah. to the greater mm -hmm. uh, vision for the tennis center and paddle and racket sports in general. That was kind of in response yeah. to Commissioner yeah. Randy's questions mm -hmm. uh, this morning. So, and I, I, he has some plans and, you know, we have yeah. some ideas and of course, I'm sure we'll have a community input process. We have done a number of things, the park master right. plan. We just completed a um, recreation program survey, mm -hmm. which has some good baseline information. Mm -hmm. I think we might want to consider um, doing a tennis specific survey and public input process okay. um, to really help determine Sure. What's the allocation for these courts? Um, you know, do we need, uh, you know, six pickleball courts? Where do they go? Do we need um, more platform? 
Um, is tennis okay with a few less? I mean, those are the kind of things sure, I think that we, we have to, to determine. Figure out. So, just one question: Is the surface for pickleball the same as the surface for paddle tennis? No. Okay, I knew the paint striping was different, but I didn't know about the surface. Yeah, not really. I mean, you, okay. you could play no, on a paddle tennis surface. That's not what you would want to yeah. do. No. Uh, it would be like a hard court, like either asphalt or concrete yeah. or yes. something along the Okay. Way. Pickleball, probably. Pickleball. Yeah. Pickleball. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that um, once we complete the uh, platform tennis, or excuse me, pickleball project on the tennis courts at Meadowcroft, okay. I think that's only going to um, fuel further. I know, it's going to make it I mean, worse. We do have a high demand now. I mean, I think yeah. that's clear. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. think that's when people see it and realize, you know, how fun it is, it's going to just yeah. become more popular, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which Good. is inevitable, right. I think. Right. Sure. <laughs> Right. So you threw out a couple ideas I really like, like, and I wanted to know what can we, what can I do, what can the commission do to support that? One of them is a survey just for tennis. Another one is kind of get input from the key groups in for tennis, obviously, and paddle, and then the what we have for our pickleball representatives as well, and talk about what the vision is there, and then maybe bring that back to public discussion this year, if possible. And I, I know that there's can't a we do that appetite. as part of the process for the main park master plan we didn't dig into tennis so much or the tennis center. but the main park we oh oh well, the new was one. all in there yes the, i mean the the idea of doing the main park master plan yes the new one. is to look at all those things and include all those groups to talk about it so we can figure out well what works best or what we're able to do sure kind of thing. yeah, yeah i think not, like an, yeah. the first step for me personally is going to be to analyze all the data yeah. we got yeah. from yes, the program survey Sure. Uh, put that report together and discuss that with mm -hmm. the commission. I mean, we're going to have to come in front of you with that at some yeah. point. Um, and then I think that's going to give us sort of a, a, a baseline information on what's the next step. Yeah. You know, what what are people asking yeah. for? Um, and then kind of work from, from there. there. Yeah. That sounds great. Any, I know, I'm sure you're really busy, but any idea when we can do that or what month about? Well, my goal was get get it tagged the first quarter. I mean, I could give you summary information, you know, in a matter of days. I, that's that part's easy. Mm -hmm. just there yeah. are thousand, literally thousands of individual responses that yeah. need to be tagged, and there's only one way to do that, <laughs> and that's by hand at this point. Yeah. So that's gonna that's the tough part. But um, I was shooting for getting it done in the first quarter, awesome. and then. We're just, right, we're just right. writing the uh, RFQ for the consultant now. I think you're on that committee, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know where we are on it. Well, how does so, the finance? It? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to sort of plan. I was going for Ian to say, how does this work with what Mr. Nell was saying? The timing of the right, main yeah. park study. You know, Mr. Smart Wilson was talking about how does this all his data, the RFQ, they do their evaluation this summer. How do these pieces come together? Yeah, so I think we're um, getting our project team together to um, put the RFQ together. Um, our goal was to publish it in April to be able to award in May um, to have a consultant come on board. So um, if we have a consultant on board for the summertime, that lines up quite nicely that our consultant who is kind of visioning out what Maine Park's going to look like, you know, 20 years in the future, it's not going to be here's the master plan and we're going to do it all right away. It's here's the master plan. So when you make improvements, this is the vision we're working towards. I think that lines up very well with what okay. tennis and rack and David yeah. and his group are all working towards as well with their survey results and all that. I think it'll work hand in hand very nicely. And the plan is for that main part study to be, we'll have some deliverable with the commission by okay. what date? Ballpark. You know, I don't know. I mean, that, that's hard to say, but I would say that by budget time, we sure want some idea of what we're looking at. So we want to know what we can do in the next year or not do those kind of things. That's um, also the study of the rec center to oh, right. see if we yeah. can, what we can do there. So, but we are really heavy on community engagement too. I mean, that's a, that's a hallmark of how we do this. So we expect participation. Yeah. We demand participation. <laughs> I don't pay play those sports. So well, yeah. I mean, I mean, platform tennis has has grown over the years. Yes. The original two courts yeah. uh, were built near the mid seventies. They lasted till just when we replaced them just mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. So they have a long lifespan. Yeah. Um, we 
we've built the additional two courts because of the need. We've now expanded the court where we're we're running out of room. We need more courts. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. we have a long term plan as well. Sure. And our long, yeah. you know, our plan was we need a bigger hut now. So we built the hut. Now we mm -hmm. realize we need more courts. So mm -hmm. now that we have a, a beautiful new facility. You know, if we if I was king for the day or commissioner for the day, <laughs> uh, be able to use that that tennis court behind the hut. We yes. can move. Yes. The two courts down, down and build two more courts. We'd have six courts right, right around yeah. that building. We have a beautiful platform facility that frees up the upper courts, mm -hmm. that area, if you wanted to, for a pickleball course, exactly. either yep. using the two courts and maybe even the single court. So yeah. yeah. And you know, we have a wheelchair accessible water fountain on the second floor, which is not accessible. I want to bring that up just because it annoys me because, you know, I really want accessibility, but you can't get to the second floor. That's municipal plumbing. That's not our plumbing code. It's the county. Yeah. Just to let you know. Sorry. I just wanted to make one more comment about uh, tennis. As Donna yeah. shared, platform tennis is growing. We're seeing growth in our, particularly in our too. programs for tennis instructional uh -huh. Tennis. I reached out to Katie Sharon from Indoor Tennis today. She shared that their demand is increasing. Walk-up demand is up 30%. Their bubbles are at capacity mm -hmm. on Saturdays and Sundays. They don't, like, their vision is not to expand at this point. They don't want to fourth bubble oh, at yeah. this time. Um, but I wanted to share sure. that information yeah. that, you know, it's and we all know pickleball's uh, rising in popularity. So I think we have this sort of perfect storm of paddle and racket sport uh, expansion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good time to yeah, you know, so think about really how we handle yeah, that. That's going to yeah. be great. I'm looking forward to it. I like to play next to If indoor, if the three bubbles are at max capacity, why does an indoor one expand? Not max every day. Max on the weekends. Um, and, but not at all hours. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. And they've offered to, uh, you know, have commissioners tour and get some information about their program. They're a key piece of this, yes. you know, yeah. puzzle with, with uh, racket sport as well. So three bubbles right now equivalent equates to six total indoor Correct. tennis courts. Yep. So then how many courts are not indoors right now? So there's nine others. So nice. So we have 15 three courts total. that are yeah. outdoors and don't get much use in the winter months. Yeah, but I mean, <clears throat> they'll go like longer in the outdoor season, say September, October. I think they even played into November a little bit this year. It's just the product of the weather. The weather's yeah. good. They'll stay out there. Once the weather gets wet and too cold, they're done and they're going to stay done because once there's freeze and thaw, the lines yeah. Yeah. pop and yeah. they're unusable until we get them reconditioned like May 1st is when the tennis center opens up. So we, we have contractors out, yeah, okay. we have our contractors out there for the, you know, latter half mm -hmm. of April. And our goal was always to try to open May 1st. When people play paddle in the winter, do they play pickleball in the winter? Yeah. Um, yes, they okay. do. You're right. So the tennis though is sitting, those like three courts are sitting for about five months, usually. Yeah. Okay, just trying to like future conversation information. Six, just trying to yeah, something along five or six lines, Okay, yeah. cool. My last question is about finances. What's the financial arrangement between Paddle and Mount Lebanon? Like who paid for the initial installation of all the ports? I'm going to take that. Sure. Okay. So um, when we rebuilt, and I had to refresh my own memory, that's why I'm offering to be able to It's been a while. It hasn't happened. Um, so back in uh, 2008, we built new courts, three and four. Those are the uh -huh. ones that are up higher on ones. the hill. Um, the total project cost was about 190000 and uh, MLPTA contributed 75000 Okay. So that's courts three and four. Then in 2016, we rebuilt one and two, which were the older courts. Now they're the newer courts. Uh, that cost came in at about 356000 mm -hmm. And MLPTA is, has pledged 100000 um, They made a, a $20,800 initial payment. They're scheduled to make nine annual payments of 8800 And I think we're currently in a two-year deferral on payments. Correct. Just we, for the HUD project? Correct. We, yeah. During the HUD project. So we're, we are due to re resume that this year. Okay. I think sure. we have five payments left, David. Um, okay. Yeah. So we're we paid. Finance 44000 <laughs> 
<laughs> my treasurer says we have five, so I did yeah. job. So. <laughs> We so they've made some very they made yeah. some substantial, very yeah, substantial yeah. payments. Yes. And they also pay for rentals still. They do. Oh, that was another question. Is they yeah. pay the same rates in the uh, fee schedule that anyone else would pay? Um, they contribute. They have contributed and continue to contribute to all maintenance costs. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's resurfacing or screens or lights or. Mm -hmm. New furnaces or gas line upgrades. I mean, they've contributed a lot over the years. So they they're not responsible for 100 percent of the maintenance, but they tend to contribute if we ask them. Correct. The only thing where there's a written agreement uh -huh. on payments is was for the construction of new courts. Okay. So those two projects that I mentioned, but and, and maintenance, we just take it like piecemeal, like we're doing tonight. Which is uh, yeah, which is this yeah. way we've been doing it, and exactly. now we'll talk about it. Maybe moving forward, we'll have a more of a plan. But I just want to know what the history is. Yeah, and and there's plenty of like routine maintenance things that you know I don't bother reaching out to yeah. them about. You know, if we're gonna, you know, replace lights or breakers or the furnaces need service mm -hmm. and those kinds of things. You know, we we I think when they tend to be a little bit more significant, we talk and you know they typically make a contribution. We also shovel off all the snow off the courts. Yeah, it sure. yeah. Which this year has been minimal. nice, very minimal. Yeah. Right? Like Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Snow is becoming less and less an issue, yeah. but it is up to the user. You know, if you happen to be the 9 a.m. Uh, uh, time slot after a blizzard the night before, you're shoveling. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. There's okay. plastic shovels out there. They shovel, they turn the heaters on, um, and... Go to work. Play. Go play. Yeah. If there was something extreme, um, there have been a very rare occasions where we'll go out and help out, you know, where necessary, just sure. because it's yeah. it's just that. Uh, yeah, if there's a couple of feet of snow out yeah. there, we try to yeah. start clearing sure. it off. Sure. So then how does a resident like how do I play paddle ball? Sign up. You go to our website, mtlrec.activityreg.com and sign up. Mm -hmm. And sign up for credit a card. spot, like reserve it. Yeah. You can pick the court, the time slot, and pay with your credit card. So I don't have to be a member to no. get on. It's open to anybody. Just certain times, obviously. Well, MLPTA has certain like matches, their yeah. leagues. They have different leagues and matches. And so typically they, they'll have a schedule, but there's plenty of other plenty time of slots spots out there where people can play. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just like tennis, you can just reserve it online. Correct. Okay. And you can cancel online as well. Like, oh. let's say you schedule and you don't like the weather, you don't want to shovel snow. <laughs> as long as you do it more than one hour prior, you can cancel online, okay. put a credit back on your account. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I didn't get along with this. I want to make sure people have any questions. Yeah. That's most of them. I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> I'm I, can, I can, I can. Forward you my notes on all your questions. I, okay. I typed them all up. Thank so you. Thank if you'd you. like to see that, I can share them with everyone if you'd like. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good. Um, a comment that uh, you know, Mr. Spark Wilson made about having some visibility for budget time. So, if it's possible in the RFP or what have you to make something, mm -hmm. a report back to commission in October, uh, if possible. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments on platform tennis? So when we're good with supporting this seventeen thousand dollar for ask, right? That's an excellent question. Ask. We need to make sure we get that collected head nod from the commission. So I see one head nod. I'm comfortable. It's two head nods. I see three head nods. Okay. So you got at least three. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Dave. All right. Next on the agenda, Brick Streets overview. Ian McNeves, Matt Bagley. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, this presentation is intended to be a summary of the uh, previous discussions that the group has had related to Brick Streets uh, somewhat because Commissioner Swagger Wilson was not uh, in her role on the commission when the commission uh, discussed this previously. She was uh, Chair of the Historic Preservation Board and was the one who the policy became the year. So, yeah, well, I'm going to do a quick timeout, jump back for a second. I got three collected head nods for which the two proposals. This is for platform tennis, for four courts or two courts. I got three yeses, but for what? I said the $17,000 version, which was the four courts. Yes. These yes for the four courts, and correct. 
Yes. That's the four yes. points. Okay, great. Yeah, I just want to make sure we all do yeah. what we're agreeing to here. So, all right. So, that's the four. Thank, thank you. you. So thank you, Commissioner, for your excellent segue into my first slide, which is our read it this week of our uh, Brick Streets discussion, which starts in 2021 when the Historic Preservation Board, led at the time by now Commissioner Swagger was it, recommended a Brick Street policy uh, that was provided to the commission. The commission had requested some additional data um, on existing conditions from staff and from Gateway. Um, as part of those discussions, commission also requested that we um, conduct a total cost of ownership um, exercise and come up with some um, more data and numbers on what the, the dollar values are, as well as the commission also requested that staff um, come up with a recommended list of streets for preservation um, and for conversion to asphalt. So just as a high level discussion, because our next topic is Mr. Bagley talking about um, the road program for this year. So I just wanted the Brick Street discussion, since it also involves our roads, to be uh, you know fresh in everyone's minds, so that uh, the commission knows that we are thinking about these things all handy. All right. So some of our expenditure history, as I mentioned at the outset of this meeting, um, there is a um, agenda item on tonight's commission agenda for this year's um, Brick uh, Repair Repair Program, and that's a picture of one of the ones in the past. So. Um, you can see some of the numbers that we've spent in the past, some of the costs per square foot for the repair program of what we've done in the past. So the commission will be uh, voting on that at tonight's regular meeting. So within our existing streets, um, these were all the categories that we sort of broke things down into um, when we did our previous analyses last year by street class, by location, whether it was within the historic district or whether it was proximate to other brick streets. Um, using our OCI PCI pavement condition index scoring system, as well as the slope of the street. So let me write this. Yes, yeah. slope of street, historical district, proximity to other brick streets, and then what else? Pavement classification, and um, we also looked at the PCI. PCI. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. So I will. I have a little more on each of these too. Cool. So by street class, um, you know, very few of our brick streets are actually like two of them are alleys and a handful are dead end cul-de-sacs. The rest are either local or collect, uh, collector roads, excuse me. Uh, none of them are arterial streets within the community, but the you know, two thirds. I was going to say that. We already took care of those. Two, two, two thirds are local. Just so you know where I stand. Um, two thirds are one gateway, and, and about two sevenths are collector streets. Mm -hmm. Collector streets means it's a not an arterial street, but it's a you know a higher street. use. Yeah, but it's still twenty five mile by per hour usually. Yeah, but like yeah. Lebanon Hills is a yeah. collector. Okay. connecting mm -hmm. isn't. Yes. Uh, cool. So by location within the community, um, we have you know a majority of them about. You know, two thirds being uh, within the historic district, about a third being outside the historic district. Um, a little bit more are proximate to other brick streets, and we do have a handful that are isolated. Um, and for that proximity analysis, we did within one tenth of a mile. So uh, we kind of took a one tenth of a mile radius around an existing brick street and said, sure. you know, is there another brick street within that radius? Um, thanks to Matt and his team at Gateway that did a lot of that mapping work for us. And I feel like there should be a little asterisk. The historic district, while somewhat helpful, it was arbitrary because we just ran out of funds and, and you know, with, with the evaluation. So it, it, it doesn't mean that it's not, yeah. doesn't have historic characteristics to it. Sometimes it means that there's been too much intervention that it's harder to establish or it isn't proximate to what we already have. And so you'd have to file for a new historic district. Make sense? So Sunset Hills, some of that would qualify for historic district, but we only did the one in the central area when we first did it. Okay. Okay. Um, and then on the PCI and slope, um, you can see sort of the distribution of some of our brick streets are in very good condition. A few of them are in. Oh, I went forward on mine, didn't go forward up there. I think they took over. <laughs> oh. Changed on my screen. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. You know what? I'm going to stop sharing. I'll just reshare. I'll see if that helps. Good. 
I yeah. think he's frozen. In. Oh, fun. Well, IT help. <laughs> okay, well, IT is taking yeah. over the world. <laughs> yes. And Nick, it appears our Zoom is frozen from our end in the commission chamber. So we'll hope that our IT director can update that. Um, but I will just uh, continue on. Sure. Um, all this data also exists in the commission uh, OneDrive folders from previous presentations. So not much of this is uh, new stuff. Um, let me see if I can. This is the old fashioned one. Let's turn around on my side. We're back. Okay, love it. That case. No, I think we are. I'll reshare. Okay, <laughs> show people what we will reshare. There we go. We're back. Okay. Um, so on the um, pavement condition index, um, you know, a lot of our brick streets are in either good or very good condition, actually, or a majority of them. Um, you know, a handful are in very poor condition, um, and some of them are also in poor condition. Um, as far as the slope goes, a vast majority of them have less than a 10% slope, um, and there are, you know, 21 of them that are steep slopes, as we would call them. Um, so as we went through this analysis and looked at the total cost of ownership as well, um, the basically over a 60-year lifespan, the incremental annual difference between a brick street and asphalt, or one mile of brick street versus one mile of asphalt street um, was about $62,000. Um, so that's per year over 60 years, um, equated to about 62,000 per year in the different carrying costs. And if anyone is interested in the very detailed financial analysis, it's both in the Commission OneDrive folder from the previous presentations, or I'd be happy to sit down and walk anyone through it that would like to go back through all of that. Okay, so how do we come up with our staff recommendations? Because that was the ask from the commission. Can you go back one slide, sir? Sure. So the annual cost per mile of a brick street is 110,342 is what you're saying. The annual cost, yes, per mile of a brick street is 110,342. And then when you take out what the annual cost of an asphalt street is, because we're gonna have to keep a street there somewhere. Sorry. Somehow. Some way, somehow, yes. So that's the average over 60 years, the average cost per year. Mm -hmm. for, for brick, less the, you know, 40-some-odd thousand for an asphalt street that it costs us per year. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So the commission last year had asked us as staff to put together a list recommending which streets to preserve, which ones to replace. Um, and as we went through that analysis, we took into consideration, um, you know, three of those categories that I had previously mentioned, the street type, the slope, and the location, um, location factoring in both historic district and proximity to other brick streets. Um, myself and Mr. Bagley worked together, sort of uh, made a metric and rating, um, and then we took, you know, categorized the streets based on that metric we created and uh, reviewed them, and then categorized the streets by three types, preserved, uh, streets for further consideration and streets that we uh, believe should be replaced with asphalt. Um, I'll say the ones that were replaced with asphalt were either steep slopes or alleys, and that was pretty much it, steep slopes and alleys. Um, so that was pretty much what the consideration was there. Um, and then there were a handful of streets, so as we break it down by segment, um, I know these numbers in segment count don't necessarily line up with the previous ones. That's because we were able to combine some of them together to make for easier analysis. So let's take Hoodridge Drive, for example. Yeah. It may have had five or six different street segments on it, but when we did this analysis, we were like, well, we're going to preserve all of Hoodridge. So Hoodridge Drive is just listed as one oh, street in this. Yes. So in the previous ones, when I was breaking it down by slope and the different factors, that would have listed out as six, but it's only okay. one in here. Um, so based on our recommendations, we had, um, you know, about seven and a half, I'll say, miles of street to preserve as brick. There were additionally um, about half a mile that were steep slopes that we believe should be preserved just because of their um, activity. Yes, thank you. Um, Connecting would be wonderful. Yes. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see connectivity. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, there were nine more that were kind of we felt were borderline, they could go either way. Um, some of them were, five of them were steep slopes, but they were proximate to other brick streets. So we kind of felt like those were toss-ups. Um, four of them were 
cul-de-sac dead ends um, that we also felt were kind of toss-ups. And then 17 were on the replace list, which was basically um, the ones that were either steep slopes or alleys. Um, so to look at it on a map, Gateway did a nice job of... Yeah, before you go to the map and we talk oh, about sure. specific streets, I didn't ever understand or agree with the cul-de-sac's dead end. Because my, I'm coming from the perspective of if I'm living on a cul-de-sac dead end, I'm, I bought that house because it is a cul-de-sac dead end. And I love the brick that it slows down traffic and it's loud because I'm prioritizing, you know, a safe street as the most important thing I want when I'm buying my house. So why would you take, why would you make that be a negative that it's a, that it's a cul-de-sac or dead end? <clears throat> well, I think I'm going to make a suggestion. Remember, this is just briefing, not decision-making. So I think right. we need to put... You know, what I call a point or whatever in that one to say we need to come back and have a discussion. So, commission decides, the staff said, right. we've got to preserve, we've got to replace, we've got further consideration for the commission to make decisions. Just for not being asked to make those decisions tonight. We do have to make them. But with, yeah, tonight. I think before we look at specific streets where things might get more personal. I never understood that, and this is the third time I've heard it in a commission discussion, why that was even a consideration. Why which, would, which is why we need to make sure we come back to that specific discussion. Just tonight, where it's just the briefing. At some point, we go over the streets being worked on, which are no brick streets right. on tonight's list. There's two. So, we do have yeah, that, 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 that answer. Just, yeah. Okay, there. all the assumptions so, I want to have that discussion. I've been asking for it for a we, year, so I, I definitely want to make that What streets are we preserving and why? Yeah. So I think this was one that jumps out was Academy Place. That this is a dead end. There's um, that's you know one driveway, on. one driveway on it. It's a handful of feet of brick. There's no other brick that's proximate to it. Okay, no um, brick that's proximate. Right. Well, well, yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. Then. I guess there's um, it's not in the neighborhood. Uh, well, there is this. That's Craig stage. Court would be too. Yeah, Craig Court's another one. Um, so I guess there there is a a proximate. There's another parallel street over yeah, here, but not right. adjacent. Right, but there's there's none that connect to it. So this was one that we were kind of like, this is. A dead end that has one driveway on it that you know could be converted to asphalt relatively easily. Okay. Are all I the alleys public? Um so most yeah. of them are. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do maintain them. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. There is a way the private streets, but yeah, yeah, I just wondered. Yeah. And Rudy. But there are private brick streets. Did I hear that right? Oh, there's a list of I private streets. I don't know how many. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Yeah. No, I was I'm asking I'm if the alleys were public yeah. streets that we maintained. Yeah. I don't That's think what there's the any question. Streets. And, and, and we've got a couple of wow. conversations going on here. So for Commissioner Flynn, I'm hearing from Rudy. No, we do not. We're not aware of any private river streets. Got it. Right. Thank you. Yes. So, um, so this map does exist as a web map online. I believe I sent all the commissioners the link. You can peruse it. Um, and I am just about out of time for my discussion session topic. So I really just wanted to give a high level overview and then kind of hand it off to Mr. Bagley to talk about the uh, roads on the list for our road program this year. But um, right. just so the commission was cognizant of where we were, where we came to, and where we are now. And this topic will come back up again so that we can um, further discuss because the ask last year was staff make a recommendation for us to review. So now you have our recommendation list um, and we can move forward. Um, you know, we do have those nine streets that we colored in yellow on the map that we said, you know, these ones are kind of toss ups depending on how we decide. So, you know, the one area that was sort of a toss up, I'll say it was over um, where the, the top end of Hill is a steep section. Um, and then there's this uh, dead end of, um, Birch Avenue that's also brick. So, if, yeah. you know, that's one of those where Adeline and Birch were definitely keeping because they're flat, they're brick, they're in good condition. Um, this dead end section of Adeline is asphalt. Um, so, you know, there's this question of there's this steep section of Hilt and then there's this other dead end section of Birch um, that we could, we kind of felt discussions should be had either way. We didn't feel in a good position to make a recommendation on this. So, can we yes. put this for discussion? Ideally, I have it quote, locked down sometime by summer because <laughs> yeah. as the managers put the budget together, you should have a good sense of what the mission direction is. 
the uh, buttons that we start talking to staff. Yeah. So mm -hmm. please keep that in mind. Yep. I'll add it to our future discussion sessions. Right. And, and the timing as yes. well. Thanks. Yeah, or I can say as soon as possible, as soon as we're ready, because now we have your information and we can take some time to look at it. But I want to nail down the exact number of miles that we're all agreeing to preserve and then what exactly those segments are that are not going to be preserved. And I was more focused on getting a decision by. <laughs> what, the, what is the decision? Let's well, right, but we have to make a decision by X date. That's where I was coming from. Mm -hmm. Flynn. But I assume that we, that we are also actually adopting policy on this. <laughs> uh, Good there, there, there was a draft. There, there was a there was a draft. Yes. Um, yeah, and works. yes, I I think we that is the end goal. Um, but my understanding of the commission's previous direction. Um, was that there was additional information the commission wanted to receive from staff prior to adopting the policy because there were certain things the commission wanted to write into the policy, such as what length of streets were going to be preserved. So um, as we were working towards that, yes, the end goal is a policy. Okay. Sorry, that was a long way to do that. Uh, yeah, we will want to clarify. I'll review that as well. Yes. Awesome. I think it should the historic they should take a look too. Take a look at the policy again. Just yeah, well, they put yeah. a lot of time into it. Yeah, throw it back there. Yeah. So, you know. Hmm? And then I rewrote it. And then you revised it. So well, that's okay. But I think, you know, when you ask people to be experts on things that you should ask them what their opinion is. When you, you make changes. Yeah, you make changes. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Revisions. So, yeah. So then the, the plan would be the next public discussion will decide the miles and the streets. And then we all think there was agreement on the next public discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. No, yeah. I meant the next step will be a public future. discussion. Sorry, yeah. not not when that is. And then we'll have a conversation about the policy. And then it could go back to HPV for input, or that could be a side thing in parallel. And hopefully we'll adopt the policy. That's what I'm afraid of. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> So if we could have the uh, next meeting, you know, in the next month or two. We will spend the next five minutes trying to decide what we're going to do for the next. So I that's think what it takes because this has been all four years, of, three years I've been on commission and we haven't gotten, you know, well, you're getting far, but you're getting close. we got to finish this. Guy. We're in the process. We're in the process. Yeah. With that in mind, if no one has any more thoughts for, yeah, I'm for, now, for now, <laughs> can we turn to the road program update, yeah. please? Mr. Bagley. I have a uh, PowerPoint here for you. Oh, wow. Uh, picture. So this is our presentation of the annual road program. I know we've uh, had multiple discussions last year, this year, earlier this year about um, consideration of PCI and what streets should be considered. Um, so really, this is kind of the culmination of some of that effort, just moving forward and looking at this year's program. Budget is relatively uh, equivalent to the previous year's uh, budget as well as the year prior. So that being said, just a little bit of background and 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 where we are um, with things. So just um, so just an overview of the current road conditions. Uh, really, at this point, we're at seventy eight for our PCI. That's really the only thing I wanted to highlight. There we were. 79 where we uh, dropped on just the hair but that's what happened that's more than like i said before we we had a discussion in january where we were talking uh complete streets and i don't want to uh, mm -hmm. sidetrack the the conversation but um at that point we said in our current budget and our current funding we were basically anticipating basically a point a year that we were that we were going to drop down at, right. at our current funding. So that being said, we anticipated that we were going to lose a point from last year to this year. So that doesn't go on on it. It, it makes sense with what we thought was going to happen. Um, so just as a little bit of background too of what different PCIs mean, just to kind of put in your mind's eye of what does what does this all mean. So an eighty is that top or le top left corner. 70 is more or less that top right. 60, you kind of see the further degradation and, and uh, cracking and, and more patchwork that's been done and so on and so forth. And then a 50 is uh, severe fatigue of the road surface and, and 
larger patchwork and things of that nature. So what we've always said from in prior years is the we want to uh, maintain what we can, let the other things kind of get to a point where you don't want to throw bad money at, at a bad road. You'd rather let it go and then redo it over time. So what we've kind of said uh, in the past is we in the 60-ish the range is where we're usually looking to mill and overlay streets. And that 50 and lower is where we're usually looking to reconstruct streets if it if they're uh, of that type of character for reconstruction. Um, and what I mean by that is if it's already a full depth street, you're not going to re typically reconstruct a full depth street. You right. Mill sure. and overlay that yeah. street. Yeah. Um, Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, when the utilities come in, like Longview. Um, and Woodhaven, where they're redoing the water, do they have to go all the way down when they replace that road? With the trench, they do, yes. 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 And then we so have the no trench, So it's the full reconstruction. Correct. Okay, thank you. I, I, and they have to go not to, they have to go curve to curve as well. Right? That's the final mill and overlay for final restoration, correct. Okay. So they reconstruct or they mill and overlay? They mill and overlay is a final restoration, but they reconstruct the actual trench work, the profile of the asphalt within the parameters of the trench. That trench. Oh, so trench. not the oh, whole street. Not, they not just not do the curve. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But if it's not packed right or all the other things. Right. It's it's a critical area. We call that critical. Yes. Yeah. So the, the stone has to be compacted and everything, right? right? Yeah, if it's within the road section, it has to be fully. Yeah. Uh, well, I've just seen examples where it's been done badly. Not necessarily Mount Lebanon. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that. Just. But that was a great lead in because my next slide. <laughs> I swear you're. <laughs> See? <laughs> Ian and I paid. <laughs> lead in for each of our. Presentation. So, just as a, a background and, and looking at some of those photos uh, previously. So, um, the top highlights and, and the bottom is where I kind of had you lead in there. So, the top highlights the on the reconstruction program on the base bid, uh, we're looking at an average uh, PCI of fifty one more or less of the streets that are on the reconstruction yeah. list, okay. and the alternate alternate roads as we get to them are about a forty nine. So, they're both in that fifty ish range. For the roads that we're looking to reconstruct and then on the maintenance program which would be the mill and overlay the base bid streets are in that 61 the alternate bid streets were in that 58 ish range so once again it averages out to about a 60 so it kind of follows that same thought process now i know just as a i, I like to give this uh refresher every year and, and give uh, rudy the attaboy here because every for the last one two three four years um, the utility companies have in 2020 have uh, milled and paved two and two and a quarter, 2.37 miles. 2021, it was 5.4 miles. Last year, um, of the work that was done, 1.45 miles has already been resurfaced, but there's another 2.6 that's going to be resurfaced this year for work that was done last year because it got too late in the season for them to complete the work. So that basically last year's work equated to another two. Like almost four miles worth of mill and paving work. Yeah. Um, and I will touch on um, a late add or a late revision to the, the recommendations that you have before you from the packet that was that was in your commission packet. Uh, we were planning on doing Osage from Cochrane to Valley View. Yeah, I yeah. saw that on there. But then on Friday, uh, from a mill and overlay perspective, but on Friday, Rudy got a, a one call request, street, street, or street opening request for PA American Water that they're going to be doing that section. So I, I have it still on the presentation, but I, we have a we have a red line sh struck and through it as You're gonna have to have it we're going to it's going to be one of those sure. ones we're going to get done for. for but it's a really it's, tough don't spot. Don't you know commission so is tough. drooling over yeah. your It's a really tough spot, though. So the, the, let me know what the communication is so I can tell the residents. Because it's a major, you know, many, major road that people use to access Virginia Manor. Do we know the rough month on timing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. It'll be a it's going to be a thing. <laughs> so I guess just a little bit of the back. Any questions on the background before I get into the individual streets? Um, so really, we wanted to give a little bit of a highlight on uh, the, each individual program, and, and I know a lot of this is maybe review for um, some commissioners, but uh, so each year we develop a program for reconstruction resurfacing. We usually, when we use the Street Saver program, uh, prior to that, it was a cartograph. Either one, it's a pavement infrastructure management program. 
Um, and what that does is it, it, it hones in on the streets with the current budget, the biggest bang for your buck, that type of thing. And so that way we're also not going out looking at all 80, 80 miles of roadway within Mount Lebanon. We're looking at a, a confined search and looking at those streets. And we usually look at two years worth of roads that the program uh, suggests. And then we prioritize from there. Um, and then other considerations when we're developing the program include uh, conditions during the field review. If there's any flooding issues, we have a flooding map. We know we've all uh, dealt with that over the years. Any icing issues, uh, Public Works keeps a comprehensive list of all the icing problems within the community. So that obviously weights higher on a road if, it, if there is an icing issue. Uh, we look, we obviously talked to Rudy and Public Works to see if there's any problem areas that have developed in, in years past. I know we were we were talking about Birch. That was a street and uh, um, that was a street that there was a water leak that happened years ago that ended up uh, washing out all the bedding of the, of the brick and then we ended up having to advance that street remember when that, did that. that wasn't even that wasn't a street we were originally considering but it was one that kind of moved to the forefront because of something that we were unaware of at the time so that that's the consultation of public works we, that those items come up uh utility coordination like we just found out about on friday with osage so that we try and uh stay abreast of work on the, uh, from the utility companies. Um, and, and to that end, we do enter all of the roads that we are um, planning on doing into uh, what's called a complex one call. It alerts all the utility companies of the roads we're gonna be doing. We also send letters out to all the utility companies of the roads that are, we're planning on. We've been sending out, I know Public Works, uh, we've been saying uh, what the five-year program or the five-year potential list of streets that way, Hopefully, we can have some synergies on the work that we're doing. Do we ever get synergies? Yes. We have. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, we're here. so we're living we had we had to bury yeah. us, but yeah, but yeah. 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 I just meant water lines are breaking all the time, that kind of thing. Just be nice to have. I was just thinking more yeah. just getting a synergy of hey, we're about to pay to work on that street. And the old utility comes in and does it for us. Yeah. Um, and then I we have the continuation of previous programs. So sometimes there's too much to do in a given year because we, especially with reconstruction, because it is an inconvenience to the mm -hmm. residents because mm -hmm. you are ripping the entire roadway out. Right. We usually try and limit that at a maximum to about a thousand foot length, just so that if you live in the middle, you, so you don't have a long walk. Um, but the goal is to do the whole yeah. streets. So sometimes we're looking at, we'll do a, a five, 600 foot this year and then do the next piece next year. And we have a number of those that are on the list for this year. And then once again, the length of the street being impacted. So without further ado, so with the reconstruction program, so there's the line, the above the line and below the line. And the reason that there's so, and I'll touch on this here in a minute, but the reason that there's so many streets below the line is that we want to give flexibility to the commission. Because we, I, I know that there's two brick streets on this list that were on the uh, list the replace list that, mm -hmm. that we talked about, uh, and we'll get into that here in a second, but it was the steep section of Crystal right. coming off of Castle Shannon Boulevard. Yeah. So that is a brick street that was on the replace list that's been on the list periodically over the years, as well as Craig Court. That's yeah. kind of like an alley coming off of that in one well, of the and narrow exactly street. It is, and it had the call to sack. And, yes. Yeah, so exactly. So like but at the same point, so those yeah. both don't have connectivity to the historic district. Uh, both were on that replace list that was in the recommendation. Um, but at the same point, maybe the commission isn't ready to make that decision right this minute. So we wanted to have them in the program. Uh, we, we believe they need done. But at the same point, if, if we're not ready to make that decision at this point, there are enough other streets that we could fulfill the budget. Um, and having them at, on the ad alternate list, we at least get pricing on one. And that way you get price decides not to move forward. Yeah, we're not there. Yeah, that's a great point, point too. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, I have another alternate question. Arden, that section of Arden has at least one, if not two, of the traffic calming recommendations that are. Not that section. That's the Arden on the other side of Beverly Road. Towards McFarland. That's, that's the toward the McFarland side. piece. Out here, let me go to that. What about the corner, Arden and Beverly? Like, we're, we're going to change the angle of that curve? It's on the other side. 
This is on the uh, other side. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, 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 so if I look, no, other than Yeah, so this, yeah, there, sorry, there's a map in here. That, yeah. So this is on the left side here. This is like the, this is Beverly Road. Yeah. And this is Layton Road here. So it's this little, that little one. just this little piece. There's nothing there. It's not part of the traffic calming yeah. section and of our. One right over it with the weird angle. Okay, cool. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Um, but let me get back to the top here. So Academy Place, as you recall, we or you may recall, um, Academy Place, we did the, the other section last year. We mm -hmm. did from Parkview um, back. So this would be one of those ones where it's a continuation of a program from last year that we're looking to move into this year. Um, and in that, that, I guess, uh, I don't know how much detail you want to go into each individual street, but we gave a couple pictures of each. Uh, Flint Ridge, we did Pin Oak last year. They came down to the bottom of yeah. the, uh, to where the inlets were right here. This is picking up the next section, coming around the bend okay. to the next section of inlets on Flint Ridge. Um, this, as you can see in this photo, I, we tried to get right down on the pavement sometimes, but sometimes you lose the, the, uh, the perspective when you do that. But you can see in this upper corner where my cursor is, yeah, where that's, where the, that's where the yeah. paving stopped yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Florida, right behind the building here. So last year we did halfway through Municipal Way, and now we would be picking up from where Municipal Way is right here. Uh, this section right here going up to where the, uh, the building is here on the corner. And then this last piece on the corner, that was reconstructed many years ago. But that is, all, so then that would complete the reconstruction piece of Florida from Cedar back to uh, where we did last year. Um, so this is also a continuation street from last year. Uh, there's, a, there's quite a theme here because Maybrick is also yep. a continuation of where we did last year. We did Maybrick from um, up to Baywood last year, and now we're continuing over uh, the last section of Maybrick. So there's a lot of pieces that we're building upon. Um, a new one that wasn't in the list previously was Rob Hollow. We have reconstructed mm -hmm. the upper section of Rob Hollow down to the school. Now, obviously this one will be a little bit tricky. We'll have to make sure this section would be done during non-school yeah, time. Um, but we would be picking up from Larchdale down to uh, down to Craig. Yeah, so uh, Skylark is a, is a small cul-de-sac. Um, it, it's off of, uh, is it off of Forest View there. Um, so we're, that's just an isolated cul-de-sac. This cul-de-sac, we would be, as you can see from the photo, is that the garbage truck that just continuously rides over, over it? So we would be redoing, um, we would be redoing this. Uh, radius turning like radius that. on this call to sack just to give some more room for the vehicles to work around without okay so you're gonna reconfigure we would reconfigure and make it smaller so that way yeah. supposed to putting spikes in the street well we can do that too but, um That's just give many more reasons not to pick the trash up yeah. exactly Arden we talked about Austin this is coming down to Byer Hill Road uh, from Terrace View um, this, this last piece here. So the ones with the dash here, this would be an alternate bid street. Um, Craig Court, we talked about. That's a great street. I, yeah. I won't say too much, but but that, that, like I said, this is one that we're looking. It's kind of it's off Vanna One. It has a narrow approach entrance into it, and the first probably 30, 40 feet of it is asphalt currently coming off of Vanna Wanda, and then it then it transitions to brick. Yeah. Yes. Crystal also, this is the steep section. This was more of the, the safety issue because of the greater than, than 10%. Um, just up to Gypsy is what we'd be looking to do. Um, Cause up at that point, it, it, it flattens please. out. Sir, please, <laughs> I have a vote. <laughs> uh, please what? Remove the brick. Oh. From the lower part. Yes. And it's Gypsy brick? No. no, it's black, black dot, right? Okay, it's been a while. 
This would be the the hill coming past. Yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you need commission support right now on the crystal ad alternate at well, the end of this discussion? As long as I guess what we'd be looking for, if the commission is so inclined to and agrees with going to bid, at, the, at that point, nothing locks you into actually right. doing yeah, it. You're yeah. just getting a number yeah. for bidding the road. Um, and then we will come back before you. Uh, we'll have bids at the end of the March meeting and then look to make a commission decision in the first meeting in April to just say, okay, these are the these are the choices that we want to do. Sure. Um, the thought would be the base bid streets, as long as you're fine with the base bid streets. Okay. That's one place. Those ones are the ones we're definitely that we definitely want to do. And yeah. then we can add or delete the alternates as we see fit. Mm -hmm. In fact, I mean some of that goes back to we just don't know how the prices come in. I was going to say, and I have a slide. Yeah, so I <laughs> what you wanted to know from us tonight to scope the bid. That's yeah. what I, any answer. Now. I, mean, I, I, you don't have to tell me how. I know where the how the product works. I got. <laughs> when you ask the question, I'm going I asked him if he knew the decision from us tonight on the brick streets. That's no. what I asked him, and he said no, and that was great. So you don't have to explain to me because he got it. Cool. <laughs> um. Clemson, this would be the next piece. If yeah. last year we did Clemson from, from Bower Hill down, and then we would be doing the next piece from uh, uh, picking up at Peyton and going to Pembroke. Okay. We went halfway through Peyton last year and we would just do the next section there. Oak Way, we bid this street, I think the last two or three years. Yeah. And and we we have multiple bids on it. It's just it just has, it hasn't made the cut yet. So um, it isn't very, I mean, it's right down here from the building. If you take it, have a chance to drive, I mean, you'll, you'll see it's in, in definite need. Um, and then lastly, this as a recommendation from Public Works, Wells Drive was the original. Um, it's, it's in pretty bad shape, but as we looked at it, if we were doing Wells, we might want to just add on this small piece of Oregon Drive while we're there, because it's right at the edge of the kind of municipality. Um, and then we usually throw one alley in there. Uh, we do have Summit Way at shown. It is a narrow uh, alley. It's, it, it's definitely a need. So we kind of do that just to get some numbers and, and pricing on it. Uh, the summary of this year's uh, recommendation, the base bids account for 1.4 million. As you can see the breakdown below, how much is curb, how much is reconstruction, storm work, and additional storm work. And then the alternate bids, we almost have an equal amount of alternate bids. So the total is about 2.7 million. Obviously, that's more than what our budget will support, but we have choices there for what sure. we do. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so then just real quickly, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Oh, I got to go. Uh, maintenance program. So we have we did the same thing with the maintenance. Uh, you'll see I, sh I struck out Osage on the, on the presentation just because that's the one we're going right. to get done from the water company. So... We have a base bid of about one and a half miles and another half mile on alternate streets. Uh, high level, I'll just kind of zip through the in a place. Bower Alley. The one thing I would like to say on Bower Alley, it is a concrete street. This is a street that's a little bit different. We would be doing the same thing that we did here, that similar to what we did on uh, uh, probably V Lynn a number of years ago and Carlton, going into Carlton Manor a couple of years ago also. Because it is the only access, there's a number of apartment buildings there to try and reconstruct that. There's no way we'd really be able to do that without shutting down all of those apartment buildings, and yeah. and, it, and there's no place for them to park on right. on Cochran Road. Sure. So what we would propose there is to um, do like a some milling. Put there's a petro like a tape that we put down over all the joints so that the reflective cracking doesn't come up through. And then pave over top of it, and it is work with asphalt. Pave over. it with asphalt over top, yes. Um, so that one is a little bit of a different situation. Uh, Cedar Boulevard, the lower end from the second entrance from Public Works, the newer new entrance for the firing range down to Gilkison, Lebanon. Here is it, uh, just down the road here. MacArthur, this is building upon last year's program. We did the other piece of MacArthur, and we did Wainwright last year, so mm -hmm. this will be. Building on that, Magnolia coming off of Cochrane, North Meadowcroft. We did the lower section of North Meadowcroft a few years ago, two years ago to be exact, and then we'd just be pulling this next section up the Twin Hills. And I would anticipate next year we would do the, the next section. Oak Park Place. This is also one that, as you see in the bottom left picture, there is an icing issue there, so we would have 
some icing um, work to do that would be done under our stormwater repair contract price. We wouldn't put that into the mill and overlay right. contractor's right. price. If we were reconstructing, we would, but we would mill and overlay the entire Oak Park place. Uh, during mill and overlay, overlay, how would the residents access it since it's a whole loop and it'll all be? Usually, the milling and overlay is, is a relatively yes. short yeah. process. The milling would be a day, not maybe not even a day, and then the the base would go down, and then the uh, uh, the binder. I'm sorry, and then the top. Of each one of those would be a day, so it's probably like a three or four day process. But they might not need to access their driveway, and even that, they can usually. It's not a full day; like they can get in once it cools, they can get back into their okay. property. So it's not. Did I hear you right? I mean, it may have gone in one ear and out the other, but. You're going to mill and overlay it. Are you going to fix the icing yes. before? Okay, yes. that's what I. Yeah, that's the, that's, that was on Rudy's comparative ice spot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it would be a different contract. It, it would be. Yeah, a different I knew that, right. but I just didn't hear if that was going to go. Wow, it didn't make sense. Uh, Woodland, just Ridgefield down to the inlets right before Wainwright. Uh, James Place, this was an alternate bid that we did last year. We would be looking to include it this year. This is the entrance. Into James Place, uh, Tulpa as an alternate, Lindendale as an alternate. We, we did that as an alternate last year. Osage would be taken off the list because the utility's going to be doing it. Oxford as an alternate, St. Clair Drive. This is another one that um, it is asphalt over concrete, but once again, these residents would have no, if we reconstructed it, they would have no way of parking anywhere. So we, we think that a mill and overlay would be applicable here. Um, so from a budget standpoint, our budget's 441,000, um, base bid, we're at about 440 with the alternate about 157, so we have options there. Um, and then just one slide just to highlight some of the cost side of things. So last year when we bid, the asphalt index was something that, that ended up, if you look at the bottom, our reconstruction program, it ended up adding about 34,000. In our mill and overlay program, at about twenty five thousand. So it was a, in all, it was about a sixty thousand dollar ad because the asphalt index when we bid was five forty five. When we did the work, it was like seven seventy, seven sixty. Um, so it does have an impact to the overall oh, yeah. pricing. Um, so in essence, what I what you look at there is it was about a sixty thousand dollar increase for forty one percent increase in asphalt. And so it's about fifteen hundred dollars per percentage point increase. Sure. More or less, if our programs are about the same size per in per percent increase in asphalt index, it's about a fifteen hundred dollar increase in cost. Um, right now, twenty twenty three published index is five ninety four for March. Last year was five forty five, so it's about ten percent up from last year. Yeah. So we do anticipate prices are going to be coming in a little bit higher this year than last year, but we accounted for that in our budget numbers. So I think that, um, but I think we have a lot of flexibility with the streets that we have. Any asphalt shortages? Somewhere. I don't know if we either, but that So that's a quick overview of the streets that we uh, propose to put out to bid. Um, the commission is inclined. We would we would move forward with bidding those streets and then come back to you in a month or so to recommend a board. I'm nodding my head, yes. Thank you. Sounds good, yeah. Those up here. Yeah. Hey, then what was your estimate of the cost? Was that done yet? Yeah, so for the for the mill and overlay program, 440,000. And then for reconstruction, our our base bid was 1.4 million and our alternate bid was 1.3 million. Yeah. So we have 1.8 something. No, it'd be 2.7 total with both all the base and the alternates. So if we do but obviously it's more than what we'd be able to do, but if yeah. Yeah, you trade. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, any other questions, comments from the commission? Go ahead. Go ahead. This topic. Yep. Good. All right. I'm fine with you proceeding. Rudy, anything you want to throw in? Or... Good. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. All right, appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right. This commission wants to the last oh, three minutes. Any quick words of authorities update or break? Break. Break. I got a vote for break. Two. I got bugs for breaks. All right, we are adjourned here. Thank you. See you in the big room. Thanks.